My name is Edward Bristow, and today I'm going to be talking to you about blue lights and its effect on our physical physiological systems. Is blue light. The light that reaches and enters the human eye is divided into visible light, comprising of wavelengths from 380 to 780 nanometers, and non-visible light, which includes light in the ultraviolet range and also the infrared range. The blue component of light between 380 and 500 nanometers is also known as high energy visible light. In particular, blue violet wavelengths between 380 and 440 nanometers are seen as potentially damaging and have been implicated as one of the possible causes of photoenteritis, i.e. damage to the retina by high energy incident light. Light helps us to regulate our sleep-wake cycle, which in turn helps maintain and regulate memory, mood and hormonal balance. But how does the eye actually interpret blue light? Well, firstly, light enters the eye via its respective medium. This may be from the sun or say from your computer screen for blue light. This light then enters and touches the retina where the retina then converts it into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is transduced and, and passed through the neural pathways and transmitted around the body. This is what gives us our sense of sight as well as those other physical characteristics that I discussed earlier, such as the mood and sleep regulation. Tesla, the world's largest optical lens manufacturer, had a partnership with the Paris Vision Institute back, that begun back in 2008. Their directive was to find the bands of visible light that were most harmful to the eyes. They split the visible light into ranges of 10 nanometers and in each band was then focused on a porcelain retinal pigment epithelial cell, RPE cell, for several hours. The blue-violet light that was discovered as part of this study is a 40 nanometer band of visible light that causes the maximum retinal cell death. Ultimately, it was discovered that the band of blue light most harmful to our eyes and our retinas as part of the RPE cell testing was identified to be at 415 through to 455 nanometers, or in other words, the blue light. Over, over time, our eyes are exposed to several various sources that emit blue-violet light, such as the sun, LED screens, LED lighting, as well as tablets, computers, phones, and the rest. There is no doubt that our exposure to blue light has been on the rise since the early 2000s. In fact, the average person in Australia spends in excess of six hours a day using blue light emitting devices. May this be before you go to bed, being on your phone, sending a text message, looking through Facebook, or even just finishing work late. This cumulative and constant exposure to the blue-violet light is going to accumulate over time and has the potential to cause vast amounts of damage to our eyes and also our bodily functions. As discussed earlier, there is severe damage to retinal cells, which leads to slow retinal death, and also the other emotional and psychological problems such as stress, lack of sleep, and hormonal imbalances that come along with this problem. Sleep regulation and the impact of devices. The light from our devices is known as short wavelength enriched, meaning that it has a higher concentration of blue light than natural light. It is known that blue light affects levels of sleep-inducing hormone, mel melatonin, more than any other wavelength. Changes in sleep patterns can in turn shift the body's natural clock, known as its circadian rhythm. Recent studies have shown that shifts in the circadian rhythm or body clock can have devastating health effects because it controls not only our wakefulness, but also individual clocks that dictate function throughout the body. Ultimately, these studies show that short wavelength blue light has a greater effect on phase shifting the circadian clock and on melatonin suppression, especially in regards to device usage. In addition, a study in 2016 comparing books and tablet reading showed that participants who read on uh, light emitting devices took longer to fall asleep and had less REM sleep the phase that is associated with deep and recovery sleep. And also, they had higher alertness before bedtime and struggle sleeping in general. While still quite taboo, 
it is clear that there is a, a definitive problem associated with blue light and it plays a significant and ever increasing role in our lives with an impact of technology and workplace driven by computers uh, as well as schooling and universities using technology to drive their learning. The new technology within the marketplace has aimed to piggyback on this 40 nanometer idea of cutting out the blue light from tablets, computers and other devices as well as LED lighting that is commonly found within the workplace. Companies such as the Essilor driven uh, Paris Vision Institute project have produced a coating known as Crizal Preventia as well as uh, Zeiss which has produced a DuraVision Blue Protect which is like a blue uh, coating that goes on the front of the lens and aims to circulate the blue light away from the lens and away from the body. In turn this stops the blue light entering into the retina and actually harming those uh, retinal cells that will eventually die. Uh, ultimately these companies are aiming to reduce the impact that blue light has upon our lives and understand that uh, the increasing technology within our, our lives plays a very important role, uh, but also they want to limit the impact that it has upon our health, such as stress, uh, as well as hormonal and sleep issues.